I just, I believe in working smarter, not harder. You know, I think, I think the old way of doing real estate is far, it's dead. It died a long time ago. And um, there's a new, better way to do business. And, um, you know, some may call it a lazy way. I call it the smarter way. So our competition, our direct competition, Redfin, Zillow, and all these other guys, Realtor.com, they're spending money here. But where we win is if we go into the niches, into the long tail, the long tail keywords, right? So here, I wanted to show you that. Let me go back to this. Because as soon as the ad pops up, I click on it. Good job. All right, everybody, we are live and we've got Tommy Mutchler. He's got two YouTube channels, by the way, before we get started, follow him there. Uh, Jake, can you put up his YouTube channels on there? He's got some really good information. We're going to be talking to, he's also known as the lazy agent. He's not lazy, but in a good way he is, which I mean, dude, did you get that name from Bill Gates, who was like, I want to hire a bunch of lazy people because they always create the best shortcuts to everything. Where'd that come from? No, but uh, that's uh, that's really smart. I wish I would have thought of that. Um, the laziness came from kind of just my hatred towards realtors. I know that sounds kind of <laughs> kind of out Wait, there. I started you're with talking to real estate. I know, agents. I know, I know. Well, it's kind of like the, the 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 realtor community. It's like, oh, you got to call, you know, hundred people a day. I used to do. I used to do a lot of cold calling before I was in real estate too. And uh, just like the stereotypical, like sales, like just smile and dial, just farming, just hammering the phones. And I just, I hated a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the stuff that went on with being a realtor. So I kind of came up with this channel called the, uh, the anti-realtor, which eventually turned into uh, the lazy realtor. And then uh, the national real realtor association didn't like me using that. So I changed it to the lazy agent. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm not really that lazy. Um, I just, I believe in working smarter, not harder. You know, I think, I think the old way of doing real estate is far, it's dead. It died a long time ago and, um, there's a new, better way to do business. And, um, you know, some may call it a lazy way. I call it the smarter way. I like it, dude. I agree with you. I think look, everything works, but some things work better. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. just how, just and as we progress, yeah, as we progress as a society and with tech, this is why we're sitting down right now talking about Chime, because that is one of the things that works best for us. So Tommy, welcome to the show. I think we've got everybody on. And for those of you that are joining late, we did put up, we did awesome. Tommy's YouTube channel. Go ahead and follow that one. It's called the lazy agents got some great information on there. But dude, let's talk about processes. Let's talk about some systems. Let's talk about Chime. What do you got for us? Yeah. Um, well, one of the reasons I fell in love with Chime about three or four years ago is because it allowed me to take my business to the next level. Um, there were a lot of systems that I realized I was doing again and again, a lot of processes. And I'm like, why can't I automate this? You know, there's got to be a better, better easier way. The CRMs I had at the time just weren't really cutting it. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure that out, but, you know, and I, at the time I had a large volume of leads coming in. So I really want to be able to like sort through and automate it. Cause again, I don't want to be wasting my time calling people yeah. all the time. Um, so what I do is instead of trying to spam people, I try to give value. You know, I know that's kind of like a, cliche word, you know, giving value, giving value. What does that really mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not just, Hey, you know, are you interested in buying a house? It's like, okay, like what is it actually that you want? Like, how can I help you? And then how can I provide that in a, in a very general way? Cause let's be real. It's hard to work with. You can't work with a thousand people. You can't work with a hundred people. Once you can't, you can barely work with 10 people at one time. It's hard to keep track and provide people that give be giving those people unique value on a daily basis. So I decided to use Chime in a very unique way to 
give value to people, to be helpful, to be the realtor that they know, like, and trust, um, and, and be able to follow up in a very unique and personal way, but still automate it. So that's kind of kind of what I figured out with Chime. And I, I do that in really three different ways, you know, starting from the lead generation all the way to, you know, setting the appointment and, and setting expectations. I think setting expe- expectations is huge and highly underrated. And then once you kind of establish yourself or establish a relationship with the person, uh, whether that's through like a buyer consultation or just meeting to sh- show the first house, because let's be real, you can't always set that first buyer consultation appointment. Sometimes you just got to show them a house. Um, um, and then just doing proper follow-up that way. Um, so I, we kind of had it broken down into the three main ways that I do that. I don't know if you want to okay. go over that. Um, hey, first, Tommy, I just realized, sorry to interrupt you. We have the same wardrobe. Holy crap. Well, it's because we look good. You got the, you got the t-shirt I sent you, I see. Yeah, I did. I did. I threw that on real quick. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I just, I was looking at your background and paying attention. I was like, hold on. He's got the same t-shirt. All right. Continue. Well, I, I look up to you. Story. So I want to, I want to be like you. So continue. Oh, no. see now, um, now, now you got brownie points. So we're good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the first way I kind of, I use, you know, chime is I use it in three, you know, like I said, three different kind of ways. Um, the first way is kind of like the lead generation or lead nurturing. Um, I have a lot of different, uh, smart plans. So for those of you that don't know how chime works, it works on a a pipeline system. So you have different like stages or different funnels inside of the pipeline. Um, so you can have like your new leads, your cold leads, leads that you're nurturing, your hot leads. Um, so you can kind of sort your leads, uh, accordingly, um, in fact, why don't I pull up, why don't I pull up my CRM right now just to kind of oh, show you. Dude, I would love that. And then if you want to show us anything else on slides, happy to happy to see that as well. But I think the, yeah. the very good thing we can see is how you do that on the back end of Chime, because a lot of people on here uh, don't can't visualize it as well. All right. This is your back end system. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Got it trying to i'm new to zoom i use, usually use a, a different program so i know everyone uses zoom but um um here's kind of the, the slides we were looking at earlier on the Google. three different ways I, I i use chime you know i kind of generate leads in three different ways i got zillow leads i i hate giving money to zillow let's be real it sucks but um mm-hmm. i have some friends who work at zillow and i found a way to optimize zillow, zillow to get leads really cheaply sometimes even for a dollar it's um i'm gonna make some videos on that later but uh, it's kind of a really cool hack um and I'll, I'll tell you guys about that some other time another video because it, it takes a while youtube leads i love generating youtube leads these leads love working with you and just kind of reiterate that whole people know you they like you they trust you they want to work with you and you've never even spoken to them um it's also great to use youtube videos to as to repurpose your content and send those to leads accordingly Mm-hmm. But chime, but chime, nurturing old leads because I got you know I got thousands of old old leads in here that I like still like to nurture and go through. Uh, as we were talking earlier about the the pipeline system, so this is just my contacts page page inside of Chime. You can see up here on the top bar, you have this pipeline set up uh, all the way from new leads all the way to closed leads, and then I have a few more here that don't really matter. <laughs> But my first section here is my new leads, my cold leads, and my nurture leads. These are all leads that I'm that are not active. They're not leads that are currently mm-hmm. buying, buying. Even new leads, I've never met them. Met. So I, I, to, I think of it this way: these are leads I've never met before, and I'm not currently working with. Appointment set, active clients, and other contract are my. These are the clients I'm currently working with. As you can see, uh, I got about. You can see how many leads are in these pipelines. I got about 25 that I'm actively working with, which like is a lot. But mm-hmm. I use automation to to help me out along the way. So first and foremost, um, Chime's pipeline feature is a really cool tool. And if you know anything about Chime, it has a really powerful smart plan tool that allows me to um, automate a lot of this processes for you. For example, I have Zillow leads that come in. And when a Zillow lead comes in, instead of going into the new pipeline, so Zillow leads come in in two ways. Um, There's a call connection, and then there's a, um, and those call connection leads um, they either just want to talk about the property or they want to schedule a home tour. That's true. 
If they want to schedule a home tour, Zillow will tell me that in the form of a tag. So I'll get a tag inside of Chime and it will trigger a smart plan that moves that lead from a new lead all the way to my appointment set lead. So I'll get an appointment Ooh. set. It just happens automatically. Um, and this usually happens about, I set this for 15 minutes after the phone call. So it goes mm -hmm. right over here. Um, and if I don't, and if I don't get them, uh, if I don't set an appointment, um, it, you know, it, it doesn't provide that. It provides just a connected tag, not an appointment set tag. So it goes straight okay. into the nurturing. So depending on which pipeline they get thrown into, and again, this is just one lead source. This is just Zillow right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get different, um, a different smart plan applied to them. And those smart plans are, they're kind of setting expectations. And there are some very general emails like, hey, it was great meeting with you. Um, this is what it's going to look like working with me moving forward. So for an example here, if we just go to my appointment set and let's just click on Chris. Um, if I go to a smart plan that went out, um, it says, you know, appointment set, setting expectations, uh, an, an introduction video. Basically, this is a smart plan that goes out to any lead I set an appointment for, whether I'm doing a home tour or I'm doing a buyer consultation. Chris, we're doing a buyer consultation. This is a YouTube lead that I got. Mm -hmm. um, but they, she got this email and it's a bomb bomb video. And I made mm -hmm. this really high quality video. It's three minutes long and it's setting the expectation of, hey, this is what you can expect mm -hmm. next. I got three really important things we need to talk about. First off is the housing market. The housing market is, as you know, chaotic. And in about two minutes, I'm going to be sending you another email with a video on my latest housing market update. Mm. Um, obviously, this is a pre-recorded video. I'm not going to remake it every single week. I make housing market update videos every week or two. So, and I don't want to overwhelm with, with them with information in, in one email. Because let's be real, we get those big long emails full of text. Nobody and reads you never, them. You never, you never read them. You never go through them. Um, so I'm keeping it short. You know, a lot Do of my you emails make Tommy, do you make these, this, because look, I'm looking at this video right now and that's a new background because you just moved into your place. I know that's a new video. How often are you making these great videos? Um, I updated every six months to a year. Got it. Oh, this one perfect. I made, I, I don't know, um, a couple months ago, I made this video. Nice. So it makes sense. I see that. And then yeah. tell me about the YouTube leads. How, how is it that you're getting YouTube leads right now? Great question. I have two YouTube channels. Um, well, actually I have a, a lot of YouTube channels, but you only talked about two different YouTube channels. My old channel is my Tommy Mutchler channel. Um, and I spent a lot of time making videos about real estate and living in Bellingham, living in my area. Um, and I'll, and I'll pull up one of my, my newer channels. Um, and then I spent a lot of time. I spent a lot of money and time learning how to YouTube, you how to use YouTube effectively. And mm -hmm. I realized the way I set that channel up and the content creation I was making wasn't as effective as it should be. So pull up my other YouTube channel. Do you watch while you're going on here? Do you ever watch um, Fortnite gaming on Twitch or YouTube? Uh, Just not, you know, I think I maybe watched it once or twice a long time ago when my friends used to play Fortnite. All right. Side so note, go back. Sorry. Go back. <laughs> No, I'm saying go back. I mean, go back to you. Back to you. Oh, <laughs> back, to, back to you, Tommy. Okay. Oh, like oh, we can go back and look at my other oh, stuff. Back to you, buddy. Um, you're gonna see a couple of videos up here. Long story short, I've created a new channel called Living in Bellingham. So it's a little bit different. It only has four. It only has. It's actually right here. You can see it only has four videos. Um, Seventy subscribers. Um, but we're already getting you know thousands and thousands of views. I've already generated. Um about six leads off of it. And I've closed three of those leads. Wow, man. Um, just this one channel. And like, this is one of my videos, you know, the pros and cons of living in Bellingham. Here's my old YouTube channel. Um, this video I made like three or four years ago. Um, it's absolutely terrible. It's a terrible video, but um, you know, it has, cares? has 50, almost 50,000 views. Yeah. Um, but even this one with just... Um, 3,000 views has already generated six leads. And these leads have been in the million dollar price range. Not all of them. Some of them are in like half a million dollar price range. Um, do you find been, them more, do you find them organically through creating YouTube videos or do you create the YouTube videos, put money behind it, 
and then how, how does this work? Tell me. All, all organic. Um, I used to put some money behind some of those videos. Uh, admittedly, sh I'm shame to, to say this because I feel terrible. This video right here, I bought the first thousand views. Uh, and I can tell you right now that hurt this video. Thankfully, it recovered the next 50 or 45,000 views were all, all, all organic. Um, I've spent a lot of time studying YouTube from Daryl Eves. He's a big YouTube coach. He's responsible for, you know, he partners heavily with Mr. Beast, which as you, I don't know if you know who that is. He's yeah, huge. Yeah. He's like 50 million subscribers. Um, and he has this really expensive YouTube course on how to do YouTube right way. And long story yep. short, putting money behind videos, whether you're using Facebook ads to push uh, traffic to your videos, um, um, will kill your videos. You think it would help your videos, but the way the YouTube algorithm works, it will 100% kill your YouTube videos. And um, um, YouTube will not like that. It punishes it because YouTube cares about something called um, watch time. So they want you to watch your video for a long time, but they also care about watch mm -hmm. percentage. Mm -hmm. How much are you watching it? And then True. most importantly, they want you to stay on the platform. So they want you to click on something else. So if you pull it up on mute on your, on your, uh, let's say uh, um, a Facebook ad, you pull up a YouTube video on watch your Facebook ad, you're probably not going to watch the next video, which is going to hurt the algorithm because you're going to be, you're still kind of stuck in the Facebook world. So True. Um, you're not going to be able to stay in the YouTube algorithm. Um, so tell me then if you're getting these organically, uh, let's say they're probably commenting in there or, or they're finding you and then they're filling out something. How do you connect it to chime or what happens next if they contact you in the comments yeah um so i put a call to action at the end of my videos um i find putting it at the beginning doesn't work very well and then i have in the description mm -hmm. uh, i have a link um moving to bellingham wa um let's talk about your home goals and i have a calendly link so i were to click that okay it's going to pull up calendly you want to buy with me you want to sell with me and then realtors only um people will click on it I uh, will schedule a time. I think we, I think a lot of us have used Calendly. I love Calendly. It's a free yeah, software. I, I pay for the updated version just because I get a few more features and people give me all this information. Um, these are the questions I ask. I think I might change up some of my questions. Um, almost everyone clicks YouTube um, and then people schedule an event. I then use Zapier to zap it into Facebook. Perfect. Or sorry, not into Facebook, into Chime. Chime. Yep. Um, comes through as a Calendly lead. So the Chris right here is a, a Calendly lead. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, they're going to get some smart plans applied. You can see here some of my completed smart plans. Um, um, one was a Calendly appointment set, moves the, count, moves the lead into appointment set. And then I, they got a few emails. They got an introduction email like I talked about earlier. Then they got a state of the housing market video. So basically this is just a, hey, so here's the current housing market. And then here's a video on everything you need to know about buying a house. And then they said, were sent a text message saying, hey, just want to let you know our, our we, I got your appointment. Um, mm -hmm. We're all set, ready to go. And I don't, I just, they don't know that this message is for people who schedule a showing appointment or a, uh, or are YouTube lead looking to do a home buyer consultation? Um, it's just a very general text message that kind of touches both those things. And it reminds them, hey, I got two important videos for you to watch and two different emails. Please check them out before we meet. Um, and almost everyone watches them. Uh, not everyone, not all, my, not all my Zillow leads don't always watch them, um, but all my YouTube leads 100% watch. YouTube. Yeah, I figured if they're already coming from YouTube, they're already sold on you. So it makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. And in those videos, it's, you know, I'm setting expectations. One is, hey, you're going to sign a buyer at the end of this video or at the end of our meeting, you are going to sign a, um, a buyer agency agreement. Like I, I set those, I set those appointments. So I don't want there to be any surprises or people feel like they've been tricked or anything. Surprise. Like that. Yeah. Right. Cause people don't like the, the, the sneaky slimy salesman. So I just try to be very transparent. Like you don't have to work with me, but just know if we do work together, you're going to sign this. Yeah. And, and, you know, I can word it in such a way. It's like, Hey, Washington state requires me to give you these disclosures, you know, um, and, you know, and I'm going to need you to sign this agreement. So that's very true. I, I don't know about you, but anytime I buy a car, I'm looking for a very sleazy salesman. Um, you know, uh -huh. so that's next, next thing, um, is once we meet, um, I've set up chime in a really cool way. So people know we have this appointment setting feature right here inside of chime. If you use chime, 
Uh, you can schedule an appointment, whether it's a home tour or a buyer consultation. Um, I use it all the time with Calendly. I don't have to use it because the appointment's already been automatically generated, but if it's a showing appointment, I always schedule an appointment in here. Um, and then I use Zapier, which is a great tool. I think a lot yes. of people know what it is. If you don't YouTube it, it's awesome. Um, that once the event happens, so once that event has happened, whether it's a, a home tour or, um, or a consultation, the Zapier trigger will event an hour later and it will trigger a brand new smart plan instead of chime and it will move them into, let me pull back up my act. It'll move them to my active clients. Nice, Does that make sense? Dude. Yeah. I love that. Great job. Now see that my, my next question to you was, well, why, why can't you, and I love, love chime by the way, but I'm saying I was going to ask, well, why not use any other CRM? But this makes a lot of sense because any other CRM won't allow you to do this part. No. And there's a, something really cool that I've never seen other, any other CRM do that I really love about Chime. Um, and that is once I have active clients, let's be real. I think we can all agree that personally, manually following up with the lead is the most effective. I think, especially when you're actively working with someone, it's good to personally check in with someone. Like you want to check in with them. Like you're like, hey, how's it going? What did you guys think about the house we saw yesterday? I talked to the listing agent. You know, they said, this thing's not going to be a problem. You know, do you guys want to move forward? That's the best way to do it. But let's be real, working with 22 active clients um, that I'm following up with every other day, once a week, um, on top of making YouTube videos, on top of hanging out with my wife and fixing my house. My house has two leaky pipes I'm trying to fix right now. It's not always possible to personally follow up with all of these clients all the time. So what have I, I've done is I devised a safety net inside of Chime. And this is just for my active clients. But if I were to go to inside of my smart plans, Dude, this is really cool. You're going to love this. Hold on really quick before you give me the, all the good stuff here, before you give me the magic. You should really call it the lazy plan. Everything you should do should have like the word lazy at the beginning. And then you can start lazy selling plan. Stuff. <laughs> this is, hold on, everyone. This is my lazy plan. This is the lazy plan. It is. It is. It's the lazy way of doing it. And honestly, it can be kind of bad sometimes because sometimes I'll procrastinate. I'm like, I'll let the CRM handle it, um, which isn't always the best, but um, it, it works. It works really well. Um, and so, that's okay. Sometimes I don't mind, awesome. but, um, let's just say hypothetically, um, you didn't call, you didn't contact that lead. Let's just say I didn't follow up with Ron in a week. I have a smart plan that I made here and I'll just pull it up for you. And it's just for my active, active client. So it's an active light client, smart plan or pipeline. And it has to have this tag safety net. So if I don't want it to go out, I can just delete this tag. And it will never go out for that particular lead. And I have about a dozen of these made. And if the lead has not been contacted mm -hmm. in the last seven days, it's going to trigger this smart plan. So if I forget to follow up with this client within seven days, it's going to send out this text. Hey, Ron, how's it going? I just want to check in and see if you need anything. Are there any new properties that catch your eye? Mm -hmm. So, and I have about a dozen different e or text messages and emails and, and voicemail drops that go out. So if this one doesn't work or sorry, if this one goes out and let's just say another, another week goes by and I don't follow up with them. Then one's going to go out eight days later. And it's going to be, has some slightly different wording. It's going to be like, Hey, we just had a bunch of new properties listed today. Um, here's a link to see today's new list of properties. Let me know if you want us to tour this weekend. Um, they might get an email with the same thing. They might get a, a voicemail drop. Uh, but you see, I have a bunch of these different smart plans and they're just one-off smart plans that just kind of go off one at a time. Yeah. Uh, this one, 15 days later, you know, it's two auto texts, you know, Hey, first name, how's everything going uh, with the home search that is LOL, Tommy, the realtor. Uh, and then just, you know, it sounds a little more personal when you do two texts back to back. Right. Dude, um, that's good. And, like and that. then an email with the same thing. Um, and that'll happen for, you know, this is, I think it works out to like three or four months. Mm -hmm. And then worst case scenario, let's just say we lose contact for 30 days, never contacted them. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to move them into a smart plan called uh, lost contact and it'll move them to the cold lead pipeline and it will try and re-nurture them 
and try to re-engage them. You're like, hey, what we, 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 we something happened. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry to follow up with you. Uh, I wanted to check in, see how things are going, and see um, if you wanted to, you know, if you're if you're still going to buy a house. So I've really automated Chime with the pipelines, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, Tristan. Like, let's be real. There's there, we can go really deep on this, and I do really go really deep on this. Yeah. But this is just a, a really quick way on how I kind of automate a lot of my CRM. Um, and how I use it to automatically follow up with people in very personal ways, um, as personally as possible, based on their client journey, based on their journey. You know, I love this. This is really good. Man. I'm glad this is recorded because a lot of people are asking, well, is this recorded? Where can I watch this on different things? Ryan's got a good question. Uh, how many smart plans does Tommy use actively and which ones have had the best results? And I'm not sure if you, you're keeping track of that. So not sure. Uh, Chime lets you keep track of all these smart plans. So um, if you see the blue auto apply button right here on the side, you can see all the different smart plans. Um, most of them are turned on. Um, there's lots of them. Now, when you, and then whether how effective they are, you could see the reporting right here on who they've been applied to. Um, you can look at um, email open rate 100%. You know, some of these open op rates are 100%, 100%, 100%, 64%, um, 39% open rate, 35% open rate, 20% open rate, 80, 81% right. open rate. You know, you can kind of see like how effective they are. And, again, you know, there's a lot. Not all of them are emails. Some of them are just text messages. Some are just tasks, like just moving the lead from one pipeline to the other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a lot we can do. And if you know anything about the, the smart plan tool, which I'm sure some of your audience does, some of your audience doesn't. The options that you have inside a inside a Chime are, are almost limitless. You know, you can do auto emails, auto text, which is every CRM can do that. Um, mm -hmm. But you can apply a smart plan. You can change the pipeline. You can add a tag. You can add a property alert. You can send a ringless voicemail. You can send a postcard. You can send a letter. You can do a Zapier integration. <laughs> so you can go really, 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 really deep with this. Now, the trick is, don't overcomplicate it. It's really easy to overcomplicate it. Um, but, uh, you know, through the last three years I've been using Chime, I think I've hit the sweet spot on how to do it effectively without overcomplicating it, but still being effective and still being personal and still saving myself time. And so I'm Stacy, do you design all of your own smart plans or do you use the ones Chime has and then modify them a little bit? I use my own smart plans. Um, I don't use a single one that Chime has given me. Awesome. And how, how long does that typically take you to do when you were building them out? Do you still build them out? What does that look like? I still build them out. I, I'm currently revamping how I do um, my nurture leads and my cold leads. I've had a system. It was working well, um, but I, I feel like I need to, I feel like maybe I don't, I feel like I need to change it and make it a little bit better, more personal. So I'm tweaking it. Um, it really depends. Um, I can have a smart plan done in 20 minutes. That's really short. Um, you know, it could take a couple hours. The thing is, it's just going to take time. It's going to, it's, it's a slow process. You know, you, you're not going to build, if you're new to Chime, you're not going to build this all in a day. You're not going to build this in a week or a month. This is going to take a couple months to build out and that's fine. There's going to be a lot of fine tuning, you know, mistakes are going to happen and that's okay. Um, some of the bigger comp, more complicated smart plans, like figuring out how to make this safety net that I'm talking about here, where the one text goes out every, mm -hmm. um, couple of days, it, it took me a bit of trial and error. I don't know why it seems so simple when you look at it, but it doesn't, it didn't always work at first. I had problems. I had to fine tune it. I had to test it out. Um, you know, it, it took me probably, mm, I would say a week, but probably, probably 10 hours of working on it. Um, but that was over the course of a week and a half that it took me to really dial it in. Okay, dude, I, I love that. Another question for you, a couple of questions. By the way, Tommy, great, great information. I love how you've broken it down. Um, on the tab there next to my smart plans, you see team smart plans, and then you see library. Somebody wants to know what that is and what that's all about. Library is just a ton of smart plans that Chime has loaded up in there for you. Um, they work in different categories. You know, you can, you got your initial contacts, you got your AI contacted, uh, you got your seller campaigns, 
Um, you got behavioral campaigns, you got holiday anniversary transactions. Um, you got a lot of different options here. And these are just pre-made campaigns that uh, Chime has made. Perfect, perfect. All right, a couple more questions for you. Yeah. Does Tommy handle his email and text directly from Chime or does he use a third-party provider like MailChimp that integrates with the Chime CRM? I have a MailChimp account that I send my leads to that I do not use. <laughs> I love the Chime. I love Chime's email system. You know, they have a great tool here. So they got the, they call it workspace. It's in beta right now, or I can see all my conversations, whether the text and emails, of course, I can see it on each individual lead. And of course I can pull it up here on the right side if I want to. Um, I, I handle all my texts and emails, my, the AI chat bot, all of it inside of Chime. Chime has a really robust texting and email system. Uh, that also doesn't end up in spam. One of the big reasons I chose Chime um, is because the emails did not go to spam. It somehow gets through the spam filter. I know Chime cares deeply about their email reputation and it's very, very effective. Yeah, very true. Good point on that. Uh, would you advise hiring someone to build initially or if you're a beginner in real estate or how would you approach this? Uh, you need to learn how to do everything yourself. I think you need to master it yourself. And then once you master it, you then start outsourcing it when funds become available. I've had a lot of people want me to build. I've had, I've had people offer me $15,000, $20,000 to build out their Chime CRM. And I've had to turn them down because I'm not going to make it. I can give you exactly what I have, but it might not work exactly how you want it to for your particular market. And you might not be able to if you don't know how it works, you're not going to be able to use it, utilize it effectively. Because yes, I automate a ton, right? But sometimes I have to go in there. Not all, not all my leads go into the appointment set. If I talk to someone on the phone, how is Chime going to know that it needs that we need to set an appointment? You know, I'm going to need to manually add that lead to the appointment set. Um, I also use like the AI chatbot a lot. The AI chatbot. You know, sometimes, and I use it to when a lead's not interested or it tells uh, the people to go away or if it, or here's the problem I had with the, the chatbot is I don't work with rentals. I don't, I don't help people rent houses. So if they think, so if the, ch the chatbot thinks someone's renting a house, it's going to put them in the unqualified um, lead category. The problem mm -hmm. is we have a lot of leased land around here where people buy the house and they lease the land. Um, so the AI sometimes throws leads in this unqualified bucket. So I need to know how these things work. Um, so I can, so I can, and I built this, I built that, that system out. I've used, I use the chime AI chatbot, but there's different tags that the chime AI bot uses. And I use smart plans to you move the lead around accordingly. Um, but if you don't know how those systems work, you're going to be losing business. So I think it's important that you build out your own CRM, how you see fit Watch mm -hmm. videos like mine, watch other people's videos, see what other people are doing and make it custom to how you do run your business. And then, and then once you know how it's run, then you can outsource it, maybe pay someone else to manage it or optimize it. Or if you start having a team, I would say the exception is maybe you have a team, you have a large team and you can afford to hire someone to really just manage your CRM. That's their only job. Otherwise, I think you should do it yourself. I like that. All right. There's a, uh, a whole bunch of questions. I have, I haven't answered I'll, all of them. So I'll go faster. Here, here we go, Tommy. I'm going to first, let me answer by saying the chime platform drops the voice messages through slide broadcast. So you're going to have to add that if you want it, it integrates perfectly. Uh, the pricing on chime, Jake, just put up a link there. Go ahead and take a look at that. And in regards to the library of smart plans, they're built into Chime already. You can go in and modify them super easy. The AI chatbot is, is an additional fee. You can add that if you want as part of the subscription. And what are the main advantages of Chime over FUB? I really think uh, the smart plans through texting is one. And then it's an all-in-one. You have a website as well where you can then go in and buy Google PPC leads, Facebook lead ads, which then leads me to the last question, Tommy, where do most of your leads come from? Do you, do you buy Google PPC or uh, Facebook lead ads? I used to buy a lot. I, I spent a lot of money in those. Um, you know, they, they work. Here's at the end of the day, a lead is a lead is a lead. 
You know, the inter- the, the industry average, I think, is one to two percent conversion rate. Zillow, the reason I use Zillow is at the end of the day, the way I've been able to hack Zillow, and not everyone can do this. I'm not pretending everyone can do this. And I'll make a video about it eventually. I, I promise. I can't tell you when because I'm lazy. Uh, just kidding. But yeah. Um, it's more cost effective for me and I get higher quality leads and it's less of a hassle for me personally to just make YouTube videos and buy Zillow leads. But Chime is great. I'm not heavily considered follow-up boss, by the way. And um, uh, Chime was, was worth every penny. It's just I better. It, I love it. Look, we can keep on going with questions. If anybody has any questions for you specifically, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, of course you can just email me, Tommy at the lazy, uh, at the lazy realtor, uh, dot com. uh, not the lazy agent. I don't own that domain, but Tommy at the lazy realtor.com. You can email me. Uh, you can follow me on my, uh, Instagram, either the Tommy much, you just Tommy Muchler uh, on Instagram, or you can go to my YouTube channel and you can leave a comment on any video. I try really hard. Uh, and I respond to 99% of the comments on my YouTube videos. Uh, again, that's the lazy agent. Thanks for jumping on, man. I appreciate you. And this was brought to you by Chime. So jump in and check them out. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks. See ya.